Let's go Green Wave, Roll Wave. Uh, all right, let's move on to the second game. It's the game. Michigan, Ohio State. Ohio State will host Michigan here. Seven, seven and a half point favorite at home, trying to avenge that loss last year. Of course, the winner will win the Big Ten East Division and go to the Big Ten Championship game and have the inside track to a college football playoff berth. I uh, will tell you, and by the way, over-unders 56 has come down from 60 and a half. I have struggled with this game all week, and I've struggled with both teams. I faded both last week smaller just because I just don't, still don't feel like I have a handle on either. Um in, in pretty good spots, which worked out. But Blake Corm, the Michigan running back, is he going to play? I mean, when he's on the field, he touches the ball 90% of the time. Is He is going to play. Is he fully healthy? That's massive because Michigan's passing game has been going in the wrong direction. It has been extremely inefficient for weeks. Can they attack this Ohio State secondary, which hasn't been tested often, but when they have, they've, you know, by anyone with a pulse, they've given up some yards. Um, and neither team has been tested that much, which is makes it really, you know, because obviously they're so much more talented than everyone else. But given their schedules, it's just not it's not we have we usually have more data points of both of these teams by now. On the other side of the ball, it's can Ohio State attack this Michigan secondary through the air? Jackson Smith the Jigba is not there. We talked about some of the struggles uh, of CJ Stroud that you've mentioned hasn't been as efficient or as explosive as some have thought coming into the year so i don't know i feel like there's more questions than answers for i mean michigan also has donovan edwards because they're they're running back up it's a team that needs to run the ball to have success and can they do it against ohio state who knows that i'm sure they're going to stack the box here but if blake quorum's not there and edwards isn't there can michigan keep up with an ohio state obviously you think it's going to put up some points for sure marvin harris and company that so yeah, I struggle. I'm struggling back and forth, which maybe just means I'm going to pass. Um, I I think the under makes sense coming down, especially if Corm's banged up. But what do you see here? Break it all down. Yeah, I don't. I'm not struggling to handicap this game. I did a deep dive. I've spent most of my little 48 hours to get ready for this week's games. Most of it on this one, uh, and I very clearly am behind Ohio State here. So much to the fact that last week I had a look ahead line of Michigan plus eight. Uh, I was happy uh, at one of my books to buy a half point from seven half down to seven and throw three times as much down as what I did last week on Michigan plus eight. I like Ohio state that much. So, and I think there's really a lot of reasons why it's hard to get out and, you know, maybe in written format, it's, it's hard in this limited time we have. So the best I can do is everything Michigan has done to this point is about beefing up that run game. That's all Harbaugh has wanted to do for the last 12 months is beef up that run game so they can, beat Ohio State again. And Ryan Day was smart about that. The second he lost that game to Michigan last year, he went out and got Jim Knowles just to stop the rush. And so what's happened, if you go deep dive and you go into the film and you watch Ohio State on defense, they're not going to be tricked by anything. Michigan go does so much pre-snap. There's so much motion. They're in pistol. They're in loaded pistol. They're in different schemes. They have linemen pulling what's called a G scheme pull, a dart pull. That just depends on which way the, the linemen pull. But And Michigan even went out and got Olu Oluwatimi to play center for them in the transfer portal. I mean, he's one of the best centers in the nation. And despite all of this motion, this pistol, and this great running attack that they have, Jim Knowles has perfectly set up this Ohio State defense to, to stop it. So the four two five has been designed to stop the run. And if you go and watch tape like against Iowa and Penn State, they used heavy motion and pistol formations, and neither of them could get the Ohio State front to get confused, to miscontain assignments. And I think the biggest thing that people don't understand is that Josh Proctor and Ronnie Hickman are the safeties for Iowa State. They are excellent at meeting at the point of attack on the line of scrimmage. When the ball has been run by any team that they've faced, those safeties have been there ASAP. And that was a big difference from last year. That's why they got tore up in the rush game. And by the way, (laughs) Proctor, Hickman, they've missed 13 tackles combined this entire season. They've also recorded 12 stops, which PFF defines as a failure by the offense, a negative play by the offense. So the safety play has made all the difference. And these guys, no matter how much motion you do and how much you do with your running backs, 
they the uh, the the defensive interior, the edge, the linebackers, the safeties, they don't break their assignments where they're at in space, and it's just been a huge difference. I, I can tell you, read you off all the numbers against the rush, but they've been fantastic. Yeah, and their the, weakness is against the pass, and I'm just not sure that McCarthy will no. be able to based on what we've seen over the past few weeks with those receivers. It's not all McCarthy either. There's been drops, there's yep. been bad routes, but does does the Ohio State run defense even matter when? By the way, and if Corm's not 100% healthy here, and what are your thoughts there? Yeah, so I go to the other side of the ball. The issue – oh, well, hold on. No, gonna... wait, Corm. Is it Corm? Does Corm – like, yeah, if Corm's not even healthy, then it's even easier for Ohio State here. Yeah, he's handing out turkeys and telling everybody that he's in good shape. So, he'll, he'll I mean, he might be running the ball, but you hit the nail on the head. Like, it, it does – you know, Ronnie Bell's dropping balls. I mean, everybody out there that is uh, – that J.J. McCarthy is trying to hit is dropping balls. So, it's not all on – it's not all J.J. McCarthy's fault. And so if you go and look at what Ohio State did against quarterbacks that have comparisons to J.J. McCarthy, they've had a ton of success there, too. So at least, you know, from a Michigan team total standpoint, I think they're going to have some problems here. Now, Ohio State has given up a couple of explosives this year, but it's been through the air. So I don't expect that to happen on the ground. When I go to the other side of the ball, the issue for Michigan's defense is really twofold. They their pass rush and their zone coverage. It's just not been as elite as it has. I know a lot of people love this Michigan defense, but the pass rush and the zone coverage are the reasons they're going to lose this game. Ohio State's offensive line is 14th in pass blocking. So Michigan at 30th in pass rush is just not going to get any pressure on CJ Stroud. And yes, I've been dogging on CJ Stroud, but when you dive hard into his numbers, all these issues come on pressure dropbacks. His adjusted completion percentage drops 25% when he has a pressured pocket. If Michigan can't get pressure on C.J. Stroud, he's going to sit back there and pick this zone coverage defense apart. And Stucky, I feel like we're on a record that's broken on repeat because we used to talk about Don Brown and the zone coverage defense and Ohio State would just tear it up. Well, if you go and look at Michigan's numbers, they run zone coverage 65% of the time. They don't run man very much, and when they have, they've been lit up. So Michigan runs 65% and only DJ Turner at corner has been good. He's in the top 200 of all corners, safeties, linebackers per PFF. He's got a half dozen forced incompletions. But if you put DJ Turner aside, nobody else has been playing defense at all in that secondary. Like come on green has one forced, in, uh, one forced incompletion, nobody else. So the grading and man coverage is not been good. So if they decide to go man against Marvin Harrison, bad idea. They could decide to go man against Emeka Egbuka. Bad idea. And, and just to separate those two out, like I, this is how far I did a deep dive. Marvin Harrison is rated the fourth best wide receiver against man coverage. He's the third best wide receiver against zone. Now, if Michigan's going to go zone, that plays into Ohio State's hand because Emeka Egbuka is the 20th best wide receiver in zone. So, like, I don't know what Michigan's going to do. You can play man and get burned, or you can play zone, which is what Ohio State thrives in hitting. And that's all because. C.J. Stroud is going to have time to throw the ball. So there's things on both sides of the ball. Like Jim Knowles is hired to stop the run. They're going to do that. Michigan's back end doesn't have the coverage that, that it takes or the pass rush that needed to get in C.J. Stroud's face. So I'm all about Ohio State here. 